In painting plants for grade five botany, it makes the most sense to always start with the yellow. The yellow can be brought in some way near the center, radiating outwards like the sun. This is how yellow feels most at home, and this is what it does best, radiating outwards. If you have been painting with your class every week for five years, they will know this experience very well. And by fifth grade, you can choose whether or not to bring words to this part or to do it silently, depending on what's needed in the moment. By this point, they don't need the same imaginative story that you might use in the lower grades, but everyone, no matter their age, can marvel at the sun and its light and the miracle of plants rising up from the earth to meet it. Whatever your choice of language, let it be soothing and inspired. When we paint the plants, we need to meditate on the entire life cycle of the plant. It is a great truth that we and the plants are in a constant state of movement, namely that of growth or decay. When we paint the plants out of color, we can envision the movement of growth between expansion and contraction. As we paint the yellow and then transition into the other colors, we can envision this middle space between what is above the earth and what is below, what is outwardly revealed in the plant, and what is hidden under the earth. You can use just vermilion up above, or also the crimson red. This is an opportunity to practice using a very small amount of the vermilion that will yield soft peachy pinks and oranges. We can envision the warmth of the sun drawing up the forces of growth. With the blue, we can envision what is below, the contraction of the earth and the density of the roots compared to the open expression of the flowers. With the blue, we can also imagine the rains coming down into the earth and being drawn up into the roots. The blue, of course, makes green and begins to form the stems and leaves of the plant. You want to draw these upwards as if they were growing, and in the beginning, you can let the colors be more loose and less formed. You'll see that I go back later and add more leaves on top and redefine the stems. The green below also helps with creating brown for the earth a little later on. Watch carefully. I just added a blop of water to where the seed head will be. I've let it be and I've continued painting the flower heads. Now I'm coming back and with a dry brush, I'm lifting off that paint to reveal the white of the paper adding a little bit more warmth and light of the sun, going back and adding the center very gently of the seed head, and now the red of the roots, which actually goes up into the stems. The roots can be both red and white, depending on how you're viewing them and painting them. With the roots, I go back and forth between the colors, painting both the roots and the space around them. You can choose to use one or both blues, Either one or both of the reds will help you bring more darkness and some rich brown color to the earth. Lastly, now that the paper is still a bit damp, but considerably more dry, I'm going around and adding some finer details, layering on top of what's already been painted.